guys welcome back to another video yesterday was april fools and as somebody who reports on the news it was very hard to decipher through what was actual news and what was fake but i think i broke down a few things here that were real there was it wasn't a massive news day as of course it was easter monday so a holiday in a lot of places and there was just really not much going on but there was some pretty big news here when it comes to a game that people have been waiting for with xbox and with xbox game pass and that is hollow knight silk song we've known this game is coming over to game pass day one a really awesome get for the xbox game pass service it was originally slated for 2023 and then it got delayed and we've We've heard nothing about Hollow Knight Silk Song waiting for our actual release date and time frame for this game to come out. And it looks like we could be getting closer to that official release date. As ID at Xbox puts out this tweet, this one is not an April Fool's joke. This was actually real. You can go and check it out yourself. Even if you just click here on xbox.com slash store, you can see the page. But they put out this and said, not sure if anyone has heard of this one yet but you can wish list starting today. So they've put up the official store page here for Hollow Knight Silk Song on the Xbox store. You can go here and you can wish list it. You can't pre-order it or anything like that. There is no official release date, but they finally have the Xbox store up here for people to go and check out some screenshots and check out a video and just see more about the game itself. So maybe that is signaling that we are far closer to getting an announcement for the release date for Hollow Knight Silk Song. The other thing is we did see Sarah Bond put out a tweet. And Sarah Bond, it was a picture of her with all of the cameras, exactly how she would be standing and talking if there was a showcase or an announcement for Xbox fans to actually watch. And maybe this means that we're going to be getting another showcase relatively soon. But we are going to get that summer showcase. So maybe that's all that was for. But maybe there's also something between now and that June showcase that does pop up. When it comes to the Xbox showcases, my big thing is I love the developer directs. I think they should do multiple developer directs a year before and after the big summer showcase where they, they cram a bunch of information in there where you can kind of see all of the games that are coming out and then the games that are coming out in the current year they do some developer directs with those first party studios and you get a deeper dive into those because i think they are great so maybe there will be more of that maybe she was filming that or maybe she was filming some sections for the upcoming summer showcase but either way hopefully at a xbox show this year we get the official announcement for the release date here for hollow knight silk song as again this is a day one xbox game pass game and is a huge get here for xbox on the service all right now besides that let's talk about the next phase for playstation because as we know jim ryan's done his time at playstation is now officially over he has set sail he's off to retirement and hiroki totoki officially is beginning his role as the interim CEO of PlayStation. Of course, they were are going to be looking for somebody to take over that role full time. That will be a very interesting story to talk about when they do hire that person. I wonder what type of person they are going to be going towards. Are they going to go more with like the really business sided Jim Ryan type of person? Or are they going to go more with kind of the more outspoken? Probably you could look at it as more of like the gamer style of person. Person, which was Sean Layden previous to him. So we'll see what they go with. I have a feeling, honestly, because of some of the statements that Hiroki Totoki has said at their last financial results, I feel like they're going to go with a far more business oriented person, very similar to Jim Ryan, even if they didn't like some of the things that he did there, because they really need to hone in on those margins and make their business start running more efficiently so that they can make even more money he even talked about this at their last financial results and in terms of the actual margins himself and what is playstation going to be doing we know that they are pivoting and he made that very clear that X playstation is going to be putting games onto multiple platforms specifically putting their games into pc or more games into pc they've already put a ton of games into pc and it says here addressing questions asking why the game division has been seeing an increase in gross income but not in profits so toki made it clear that he feels releasing games multi-platform which he seemingly clarified as meaning pc continues to be the way forward he says in the past we wanted to popularize the consoles 
and a first party title's main purpose was to make the console popular. This is true, but there's a synergy to it. So if you have strong first party content, not only on our console, but also other platforms like computers, a first party game can be grown with multi-platform and that can help operating profit to improve. So that's another one that we want to proactively work on. I personally think there are opportunities out there for improvements of margin. So I would like to go aggressive on improving our margin performance. I mean, it's right there. And since they already are putting games on PC, you have to think the next logical step here for PlayStation will be, what is the shift in that strategy? Is it bringing games day and dates on PC at the same time as they release on the PlayStation console? And I've been predicting and thinking that they were going to be doing this now for for years especially after seeing how xbox made that shift to releasing their games day and date on pc and the success that they have seen with that strategy just getting a lot more people to check out and play their games right on day one no matter where what platform that they're on and i feel like sony has to go in that direction especially as their games are reaching that 300 dollar plus million dollar especially as their games are reaching that 300 million dollar plus cost to develop them they're gonna have to find other ways to make revenue and the other thing is the games as a service what are they going to be doing with games as a service because they've canceled games as a service like the last of us games as a service game multiplayer game factions whatever you want to call it they've canceled the twisted metal game which is sad because i would have loved to seen that but then we're hearing that ben studios is making a games as a service game so they've canceled games but then they've greenlit some other games as a service from their first party so their strategy on how they're going to expand out the genres of games that they make and the adding more multiplayer and games as a service to their portfolio is something that's going to continue to unfold under Hiroki Totoki and I feel like they're also going to be looking for somebody for replacing him that will know will have a lot more knowledge and have experience with expanding out the reach that their games are going to have so that'll be definitely an interesting one to follow here as we move forward but the jim ryan era is now officially over it is goodbye jim ryan it is hello hiroki Totoki and whoever they hire to fill his shoes okay let's jump over here We've got to talk some more layoffs ubisoft is at the layoff game again they're laying off a further 45 staff members as part of plans to streamline operations they say here that as we remember last november they cut 124 positions mainly in canada but now they are confirming a further 45 staff will be laid off in its global publishing and asia specific divisions in a statement to gamespot the publisher says over the past few months every team within ubisoft has been exploring ways to streamline our operations and enhance our collective efficiency so that we are better positioned for success in the long term so says in this context today we announced that we are further reorganizing our global publishing central and apac structures to adapt them to the market evolution with more efficient and agile approach those changes will impact 14 positions overall these are not decisions taken lately, and we are providing comprehensive support for our impacted colleagues. And they say, we also want to share our utmost gratitude and respect for their many contributions to the company. So some more layoffs here from Ubisoft, shrinking, continuing to be a part of the industry that right now has continuously laid off people and cut games and closed studios and, and things like that. But I mean, Ubisoft has released already a couple of games this year. When you think about the Prince of Persia game and you th and think about Skull of Bones, Skull of Bones came out to a lot of hate towards it, a lot of bad reviews, but I feel like overall the numbers in that game have been relatively good. In fact, they, they put out a report when it had came out just a, a week later or so that it was a successful launch. So we'll see if Skull of Bones does continue to take off and people continue to play it. Obviously that's to be mainly on the type of content that they add to that game there's also x defiant which people are still waiting for there was a big report from insider gaming about the game really just trying to be like call of duty and it's caused a lot of turmoil within the studio developing it but we'll see x defiant from what i've played from the betas and stuff was a lot of fun and i think it's would it has a chance of being a game that is in there as a first person shooter that people go towards i don't think it'll take over call of duty i don't think it'll be call of duty but there's definitely a need for some more competition with call of duty from these first person shooters so maybe x fine will eventually end up being that and then hopefully also the next battlefield will get there as well all right dead things off let's just quickly talk about this if you're a fan of zenimax online studios if you're a fan of online games mmos 
Elder Scrolls Online. This will be pretty exciting for you. We have some information here that was found via LinkedIn. And this is Ben Jones, the creative director of ZeniMax Online Studios, saying that their upcoming game is a generational project and that they've been working on a new IP for about six years. Nearly 200 developers are on the project and this project has considerable investment. So who knows what this will be? We have no idea. They've also been working, they say here, with Thomas Goldberg, who is the creative director at Showcap Entertainment, LTD, and the president of Lifelike and Believable Animations Design. So they're obviously going something for good graphics, realistic, all of that type of stuff, working with people there. And I mean, we don't know what it is, but as we do know, they've worked on games like Elder Scrolls Online and the Showcap Entertainment have worked on other stuff before you can see here. They have worked on with clients, Epic Games, Oculus VR, 343, Electronic Arts, again, Zenimax Online Studios, Drifter Entertainment. So they've worked with a bunch of different studios in, they say, the creative and technical leadership support and mentorship for companies developing interactive 3D content tools and technologies for console, PC and mobile. So there you have it. We don't know what this is. We'll, maybe we'll get an announcement this year as uh, six years in development seems like a long time. It seems like it is one of the major reasons why some of these games cost so much money to develop as they're going into these huge long development cycles and they're all seemingly known to be these generational projects. But when it comes to ZeniMax Online Studios, probably it's because it is one of those bigger online MMORPG styles of games. So they really need to make sure that they, when they do release it, there is lots of content to keep people engaged and, and not fall off it. But I'll end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.